Action 3 News Nightside, four people are dead after their hot air balloon explodes. Police have new leads in their search for the killer who poisoned Tylenol. And Cleveland now has a new test tube baby clinic. And that was no earthquake downtown, just the Williamson building crashing down. And we will show you. Paul? This weekend's weather was pretty good, and the beginning of the new week is going to shape up pretty well, too. John? Well, the baseball champions have been crowned the uh, divisional champions. We'll have the highlights, the interviews, and the Indians finale for 1982. We are Action 3 News. We're Nightside, and we are next. Say, seafood lovers, ready for a special platter with your two favorite favorites? Fried clams and stuffed shrimp. Uh -huh. Bay scallops and popcorn shrimp? Sure. It's Red Lobster's new seafood lover's choice. Now you can choose any two of 12 seafood favorites, like shrimp scappy, stuffed flounder, even juicy Icelandic lobster tails. Red Lobster's seafood lover's choice for the seafood lover in you. Choose your favorite favorites. Ever notice that the biggest people in the family turn out to be the kids? That's why we really like our new Olds Delta 88. There's so much room, it lets our three six-footers stretch out. And this one's a diesel, so we get the same kind of mileage as many smaller cars in a roomy car like this. No wonder I call the Olds Delta 88 the family car that didn't forget the family. Oldsmobile! Have one built for you. Now, Estee Lauder helps skin care become skin repair. Introducing her new Night Repair, a cellular recovery complex that works every night to help speed the natural repair of cell damage from the day's ultraviolet light. Estee Lauder's new Night Repair. There has never been any beauty treatment like it. Use it and wake up to better looking skin. Night Repair, now at May Company. Dr. Stephanie Newman talks about depression Monday at 9. Good evening, I'm Cheryl Brown. There was a bizarre accident in Albuquerque, New Mexico today. A hot air balloon exploded, killing four people and injuring five others. A North Canton woman, Barbara Morello, was one of the injured. The accident happened at the 11th annual Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Apparently, as the balloon landed after the first flight, one of the propane tanks exploded. As it burned, it rose into the air again. Those are the pictures you are seeing now. They were shot by an amateur photographer. The burning balloon then drifted about 100 feet off the air. Off the ground, rather. When the gondola caught fire, the passengers jumped out and the balloon finally crashed in flames. Barbara Morela is hospitalized with neck and back injuries tonight. In the meantime, police in Illinois think they know where the Tylenol capsules were laced with cyanide, but not yet who did it. Police say they believe the Tylenol was poisoned after it reached the six Chicago area stores where it was found. Officials are calling it the work of a random killer who possibly bought or stole the Tylenol, altered its contents, and then put the bottles on various shelves. Police say the contaminations took place after they reached the stores. But even though the deaths from cyanide-laced Tylenol have been confined to Chicago, Action 3's Joanne Nader found the sales of the medicine have been greatly affected in local stores. You can't tell people not to buy something for a few days and afterward expect them to resume regular use. So if you're one of those folks who is shying away from the pill counters these days, you're not alone. I wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't buy it? Either. No, I take time in all the time, but I don't think I'll take any more of it. Laura says nobody's been buying any Tylenol, whether it be regular, extra strength, or even a cold formula. Her co-worker says people aren't even buying the painkiller's leading competitors. Even though the tainted Tylenol is no fault of the company, consumers can't help being suspicious. You don't know what you're buying. You actually don't know what you're buying. Well, you didn't know what you were buying in the first place, but I mean, you said now, it puts a scare in everything that you are using. There are exceptions, however. This Tylenol user is true to the company. The reason for his loyalty? He's still alive today. I don't have any um, true health problems or side effects from taking Tylenol. They are a lot safer than aspirin. But guys like this are outnumbered by people working their pains out through means other than a pill. It's too soon to say, but the Tylenol scare will probably show marked declines in sales for all pain relievers. 
Anison, Bear, and Buffering are bound to recover after all this passes, but Tylenol may have seen its better days. Of course it's an unfair blow, but people have died from it. And it's those deaths that won't be forgotten soon. I'm Joanne Nader, Action 3 News. Two men, alleged drug dealers from Florida, will face state charges tomorrow, stemming from the largest drug bust in Cleveland history. Yesterday, the FBI and Cleveland police raided a motel in Maple Heights and confiscated $11 million worth of cocaine. The two Florida men were arrested. Also arrested was a 38-year-old Bedford Heights man who apparently had just bought two pounds of cocaine. The arrests are the result of a two-month drug investigation in this area. Also tomorrow, the trial of Mark Schmucker continues. He is the third draft resistor to be tried by the government this year. Schmucker is a Mennonite from Alliance. He says his religious beliefs prevent him from registering with the Selective Service. Israeli officials are mourning more dead tonight, aiding new injured and sifting through what's left of an ambushed Israeli troop bus. It happened near a mountain village in Lebanon when the bus filled with Israeli troop replacements was hit. Gunmen opened fire from a wall above the street. The Israelis do not know who the gunmen were, only terrorists, says the Israeli army. Six men were killed, 16 others wounded. Bands of gunmen are not the only problems in Lebanon. The peacekeeping forces have found a surprising number of unexploded munitions, which today accounted for the injuries of two French soldiers and several Lebanese civilians. Eighty more U.S. Marine engineers were flown in to help the disposal of those munitions. In the meantime, the massacre in the Lebanese refugee camps is not forgotten. Israeli television tonight presented a man identified as a Lebanese Christian phalangist officer who had been shot, rather, who had shot 15 Palestinians in last month's massacre. In French, the phalangist said he was glad it happened, that it was not a massacre but part of war, and that children who shoot at you cannot be considered children. He said the Palestinians tortured him and that he would continue killing them all his life. He said the Israelis could not have stopped what happened and that Israeli presence won't stop continued killing. And still ahead on Action 3 News, plain dealer workers may strike this week. And Cleveland gets a test tube baby clinic. It's Mount Sinai's new life program. Details upcoming. My wife sent me shopping. I figured no one would notice if I bought bargain tissues instead of puffs. Hey, where's the puffs? <laughs> Honey, you didn't buy puffs. Did I goof? It pays to buy puffs. Puffs is so much softer, less irritating. <laughs> That's a value everyone notices. <laughs> Soft. These are puffs. Puffs. The softer... Is the better buy. Nine o'clock. They should be here any minute. Grumbelly. They're here. Grumbelly. The dread Grumbellies. Grumbelly. Guys. A well-known cure. A snack. The right snack. Like Kellogg's cereal with milk. Grumbelly. Have some Kellogg's cornflakes. Grumbelly. Good idea. Kellogg's. Light enough to let you sleep. Right enough to get rid of Grumbellies. Grumbelly. Sorry. Get rid of Grumbellies. A light right way with Kellogg's. Thank you. Was Cindy a good girl? An angel. But uh, her wings... What? Her little dress. It's usually soft and smells so nice and fresh. Well, it ought to smell fresh. I just washed it. She noticed you didn't use Downy. There's a big difference without the softener. Downy rinses in the April freshness and softness babies love and helps rinse out static cling. It smells fresh today, and it's soft. I'm using Downy again. <laughs> Look who noticed. April fresh Downy. We're having fun with education. Join us. Come, Come back, back to school. school. This message has been part of the Cleveland Public Schools Stay in School campaign. Cleveland may have its own test tube baby by next fall with a technique that first succeeded four years ago in England. Mount Sinai Medical Center has become the largest center in Northeast Ohio for diagnosing and treating infertility. And now Mount Sinai is starting a test tube program nicknamed LIFE. 
The LIFE program at Mount Sinai is the first such program in this region for the in vitro or lab fertilization of human eggs. The program has been developed for legally married couples who are otherwise normal, except the wife's tubes are permanently damaged. The uh, program is essentially for women who have their tubes uh, blocked, obstructed, or have had unsuccessful tubal surgery, or they've had their tubes removed. The patient is asleep for the operation and two small incisions are made. An instrument with a light and viewfinder is inserted, then a hollow needle to take up the egg. And then in the, the uh, laboratory setting, the egg and the sperm will be mixed until fertilization takes place. And then the fertilized egg is taken in a careful loading device and simply reinserted back into the uterus. So we are doing a bypass procedure Mount Sinai will start screening patients this month, and doctors hope to have the first pregnancy underway in December. The cost for a lab pregnancy will be between $3,500 and $4,000. And there's other news to report tonight. Funeral arrangements were announced tonight for seven-year-old Dawn Hendershot. The body of the murdered girl was found this weekend in Stark County. Tomorrow, between 2 and 4 and 7 and 9 p.m., friends can pay their last respects at Atkinson Funeral Home in Massillon. Dawn's funeral takes place at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Tuesday, at Wesleyan Methodist Church. Her family asked that instead of flowers, donations be sent to Gorell School, which Dawn attended before her death. And in other news, you may not be getting your morning plane dealer later this week. There's only one more bargaining session with the Teamsters tomorrow. And then the Newspaper Guild will meet at 7 p.m. to take a strike vote. Some members are saying that this is it. They'll either settle or go on strike. The Brooklyn school system may be facing a strike this week if negotiations between the non-teaching employees and the school board don't produce some results. The custodians, secretaries, hall monitors, cafeteria workers have all been working without a contract since June. They have agreed to work tomorrow but say they will strike on Tuesday if a federal mediator can't come up with a solution. They're disappointed, <coughs> really, in uh, that uh, the board doesn't have more feelings towards them. Like we had uh, things in our contract in black and white and the board says, no, you're not, we're not going to pay you that. Mm -hmm. The superintendent of Brooklyn says the system is ready for a strike if it comes to that. He warns parents that uh, transportation will be affected and so will the lunch program. And if the strike does in fact occur, uh, they'll be brown bagging it. So. And uh, a cold calorie is really not too much different than a hot calorie, I guess, for a few days anyway. If it comes to a strike, the biggest effect may be on the students. Brooklyn is a close-knit, family-oriented community. School strikes just don't happen there. I think it really stinks because, you know, football games and the football players won't be able to get out to the games. So I think it really stinks. Would you come to school anyway? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> Again, there is no strike tomorrow, for sure, while the negotiations go on. Money is not an issue. The conflict is over certain work rules. And when we come back in just a moment, meteorologist Paul Edmond says we have some perfect fall weather in store for us. And Mossman says the movie Inchon is fighting a losing battle. Stay with us. These are the cowboys of France. As they drive the wild horses of the Camargue region to pasture, they share the hard work. Later, they'll share some wine, the wonderful country wine of France. And now you can share it too, for Partage French country wine is here. Partage white tastes light and dry. Partage red is a soft red with a fresh bouquet. B&G's Partage. In France, it means to share. Did you hear what they're saying about Mary Tyler Moore and Charlie's Angels? Well, I'm retired, and I watch Charlie's Angels. I like Kay Jackson. She, she's pretty quick with the gun. They're not the average detective show. I like the girls themselves. Gets rid of a few myths that we have about women in general. Mary Tyler Moore I used to watch when I was at work because we had a TV in the back. I like the Mary Tyler Moore reruns. Great show. That's what they're saying. We're proud of Kent State University and the most extensive student-operated transit system in America today. These young people, 130 of them, helping to pay their way through school and celebrating right now the 15th anniversary of serving not only the campus, but the people of Kent. 
Buying gasoline on a credit card can be confusing these days. Some stations have one price for cash, another price for credit. Well, Shell has one price for both, and we want your credit card business. So right now, you can use our competitors' cards, any oil company credit card, at Shell. And when you do, I'll send in for a Shell card in your name, Shell. Where you pay the same price, cash or credit card. Monday on 5.30, we'll show you what the Cleveland Opera stars go through in their costume fitting. They'll share some of their funny backstage secrets. Monday on 5.30. Paul Edmonds' weather forecasts have the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval. We'll certainly have to put the seal of approval on Paul ourselves because he certainly has delivered a fine weekend, and I hear a fine week is coming up, too. That's right. It's looking really good. A little cool front has passed. Just past Hopkins uh, in the last half hour or so, visibilities are now about 15 miles out there. About an hour ago, they were down to three miles in some fog and haze, but the cold front has passed. We're under partly cloudy to cloudy skies right now, depending on where you are. Temperature 63 at Hopkins, humidity 89%, pressure 3003, and the winds are calm. Today, our high was 79. 58 was our overnight low. Air quality moderate. We didn't have any rain. We got lucky. We all thought optimistically, and we, we didn't get any rain showers. And we had pleasant temperatures across the Buckeye State today. It was just beautiful. Let's take a look at some of those temperatures on Fred, our forecasting and radar electronic display. In the 70s, except down through southern Ohio, where it got into the 80s. The warmer temperature around, about 81 degrees in Marietta, 80 in Columbus, 76 in Dayton, 78 Akron, Youngstown, 79. Cool spot, 75 in Mansfield. On the super radar, we're looking at some showers and thunderstorms, but way to the south of us was a pretty quiet day across most of the country. Some pretty big thunderstorms from southern Missouri all the way down to about Arkansas. And earlier, there were some very heavy thunderstorms along the Rio Grande River. Up to two inches of rain fell in some spots out there. Most of the thunderstorms that were over Florida have now moved offshore. A little bit of rain up over the Rocky Mountains and again out over Oregon, even parts of California. On the satellite photo, well, we have a series of satellite photos starting at 7 o'clock. Look at that cloudiness over Indiana and Ohio. By 8 o'clock, it starts to break up a bit over Indiana. By 9 o'clock, it's even breaking up more. And then by 10 o'clock, it starts to break up over Ohio. Things are looking pretty good. More cloudiness out to the west of us, but look at the clear skies over Illinois, Wisconsin, and Iowa. That's what we're going to see for tomorrow and probably for Tuesday, possibly even on Wednesday. Here's some of the high temperatures, lovely weather with temperatures in the 70s throughout the eastern half of the country. 85 down in New Orleans, a hot and sticky day out there. 86 in Memphis, 91, pretty hot down in Dallas. 75 in Chicago, Sault Ste. Marie, 58. 95 down in Phoenix, 83 in Los Angeles, 72 San Francisco, 58 in Seattle, really not too bad. That big high pressure system is going to be moving in, clearing our skies out by tomorrow night. We're expecting another cold front to come by, but it's a dry one, so we're not expecting any rain. The forecast for tonight is looking like this. We're going to have clearing skies, and the temperature will be dropping to about 50 degrees. For tomorrow, we're looking for sunny skies, a high of about 73. Tomorrow night, uh, clear with little temperature change. Again, a low of about 50. On Tuesday, sunny, a high of 75. Looks dry on Wednesday. Maybe some rain on Thursday, and again, dry on Friday. Lake Erie forecast for tomorrow. We'll have southeasterly winds 5 to 10 knots. Tonight, northerly winds 5 to 10 knots. Waves 1 to 3 feet tonight, 1 to 2 feet tomorrow. So it's looking like a real good week. Maybe some rain on Thursday, but who cares about that? Next couple days looking really good. <laughs> Take the sun and run. That's right. Because we know what's behind that, but we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Plenty of time for that. Thank you, Paul. You know, promoting new business, rather promoting new movies, is big business. MGM United Artists' newest release is breaking new ground in this area by sponsoring a $1 million sweepstakes to attract an audience. But Mossman's not sure if it's worth the gamble. I've always been fascinated by those old-time war movies with the roar of the cannon. Starring big names like John Wayne, Robert Mitchum, Henry Fonda, always fighting for honor and peace. So when I heard about the apparently high-budgeted film about the Korean War called Inchon, I was ready. Reds, communist troops moving across the 38th parallel against the South. Without mercy, I might add. What could be worse? The girl of my dreams, Jacqueline Bissett, under heavy attack. But hark! Is that the bugle of the U.S. forces coming to the rescue? I say, bring on a real hero, General Douglas MacArthur, played by Lawrence Olivier. God is on our side, though at times you may find it hard to believe. Lawrence better believe it, because he's going to need all the help he can get after this one. He's obviously starred in one movie too many. You know, they spent $48 million to make this movie. Lousy characters, phony baloney situations. I mean, it's terrible. 
And maybe, just maybe, that's something to do with the special advisor, Reverend Sun Myung Moon. You know, this film's been completed for several years and nobody wanted to distribute it? Probably because nobody wants to deal with the loser. So I say movie fans, movie fans, save your money and pray. Pray that the Reverend Moon sticks to having young people sell flowers on street corners rather than make motion pictures. For Action 3 News, I'm David Moss, the Moss Man, Nightside. Okay. The latest from Moss Man. He is merciless, isn't, isn't he? he? <laughs> well, coming up on Action 3 News, we'll give you one more look at the big blast downtown. And the Brewers tonight are toasting their win of the American League East Championship. We'll have details in just a moment. The Inflation Fighter. That's today's lesson in economy. Look, most light beers with less calories cost more than popular brands. Ridiculous. Why pay more for less? It's different with Blatt's Light, the Inflation Fighter. It has a popular price and a third less calories than regular Blatt's. Fully brewed, too, for full beer taste. So all that great Blatt's quality comes through. Now some easy homework. Take home Blatt's Light, the Inflation Fighter. Why pay more for less? Fortune tellers, psychics, readers, and advisors all claim to see into the future. We pass by their storefronts and neon signs, but what lies beyond the beaded curtains? I'm Asa Ahrens. Follow me as we go undercover to explore the mysterious world of the supernatural in my report, Smashing the Crystal Ball. Beginning Monday at 11 on Action 3 News. Mike Galloway would be a top chef in any cook's book, but his restaurant's on an aircraft carrier, and he serves several hundred satisfied customers at every meal. Mike works in the Navy. Some of the best people in their fields work in the Navy. Navy men and women who have turned their experience into Navy careers. People who believe being the best at what they do also means a little more when it's done for their country. Happy birthday, Charlie. Navy know-how. It's working for America. See what's happening on the Dave Patterson Show. I love the new set. It has a whole new look featuring more dazzling guests. Dudley, for me, is probably the most important person I've met in my life. Valuable advice from a new family of experts. Fighting is a natural part of a relationship, a part of life. And a variety of topics each day. Be sure to visit with Dave and friends weekday mornings on Channel 3 at 9. If there are so many people in the world, why are so many alone? Give to United Way. This portion of the news is sponsored in part by Blatt's Light Beer. It's sports time now with John Hank. We are talking baseball, and Leon, I've got to say that the race can't get any closer than one game. You are right, Cheryl. Baltimore and Milwaukee locked horns, and tonight we got a winner, don't we, Johnny? We sure do, and playoffs begin on Tuesday. The American East came down to one game today in Baltimore, the Orioles and Milwaukee, who actually began the day, as Leon said, tied for the lead in the American East. The Birds had taken three straight from the Brewers, who were on the verge of one of the biggest chokes in Major League history. The Oriole was ready, a sellout crowd on hand, knowing this may be the last game for manager Earl Weaver in a Baltimore uniform. And the Brewers set the tone in the first inning. Robin Yount goes the opposite way. Off O starter Jim Palmer. Yount with two home runs in this game. Cecil Cooper adding this solo shot. Ted Simmons later with a two-run homer to lock it up. Palmer giving up only four hits, but three were homers. Palmer wound up 15-5 for the season, while the Brewers get the big performance from Don Sutton, acquired late in the season from Houston, and then getting all the help he needed in the Brewers' 10-2 victory. Just kicked the daylights out of us those first three. They took it to us and got us to a point where it was almost impossible to come back in those games. And today, I think we, uh, we kind of turned the tables a little. Milwaukee does it without reliever Raleigh Fingers, and now head for Anaheim, the American League title series against California beginning Tuesday night. National West, the Giants, and their manager, Frank Robinson, doing in the Dodgers. L.A. needing only a victory to force a playoff game tomorrow with Atlanta. Instead, the Giants' Joe Morgan breaking a two-all tie with this three-run homer to right in the seventh. The Giants win it 5-3, knocking the Dodgers out of the race, giving the National West to Atlanta. Even though the Braves lost to San Diego 5-1, the National League title series begins Wednesday afternoon in St. Louis, the Cards and the Braves. Final standings in the American East. Milwaukee wins it, Baltimore a game back. Boston, six back. Detroit, 12 back. 
the Yankees 16 back, and there are the Indians and Toronto deadlocked at 17 games back. Tribe dropping their season finale at the stadium to Detroit. Ellen Trammell with his ninth home run of the year off Tribe starter Rick Sutcliffe. Detroit went on to win at 9-1, while Sutcliffe finished at 14-8. As for the Indians, a disappointing tie for sixth place with lowly Toronto, with question marks for 83. Manager Dave Garcia has made it clear he does not wish to return next year. His contract ran out today, and he's heading back home to San Diego, to his wife, and to what else? I would uh, probably uh, like to scout uh, in the area near my home, so I won't have to travel so much. Traveling is very difficult. But if I can't get the job that I want, then I will try to get a job uh, in some other capacity with somebody else. Well, no official word yet on Dave's future, but we do know that Rick Manning, Miguel Delaney, and Alan Bannister became free agents today with that final out. So the scoreboard, our last one of the year, full one that is in the American League, Milwaukee winning it, Detroit winning it, Toronto 5-2 over Seattle, Chicago beating Minnesota 6-1, Boston 5-3 over New York, Oakland 6-3 over Kansas City, and California beating Texas 6-4. National League, San Diego the winner over Atlanta, but the Braves win the National West. San Francisco beating the Dodgers, Houston over Cincinnati. In 14 innings, the Cardinals beating Chicago. The Cardinals win the National East. Montreal 6-1 over Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia 4-1 over the Mets. National TV today for Baldwin Wallace, who defeated Wittenberg 16-14 in Springfield. Chris Iacotta with a 23-yard TD burst, while Brian Moore and Lance Kearns combined on a 71-yard TD strike. Regarding the strike, the NFL Management Council tomorrow may decide to open camps to unhappy players. Well, we haven't uh, made that decision yet. Uh, as everybody knows, we're meeting with the executive committee tomorrow, and I'm sure that will be one of the things we'll take into consideration, Len. So you will discuss that, and that is a possibility? Oh, well, it certainly will come under consideration, yes. I'm wondering, the, the players say they're going to have an all-star league that starts a week from today at RFK Stadium. What will be the owner's response? You have uh, hinted at some legal action. Well, there's no question uh, we'll attempt to, uh, to stop that because we feel that the players have an obligation to play for us. Well, the American East All-Stars will play the National East All-Stars next Sunday in Washington. Lawsuits by players and owners expected to be filed tomorrow. Feisman and Lomax will be the National East quarterbacks, and the Grogan and Todd will quarterback the American East. And though no official word has been given yet on Dave Garcia, it appears he does not want to come back. And I just want to say it's been a pleasure to be around the man. He is one class guy, and we wish him the best. And he probably is going to stay in Major League Baseball one oh, way or another. Maybe in uh, San Francisco with Robbie. Huh? Possibly so. Frank Robinson, a name from our past. Too. Thank you, Johnny. Okay. Cheryl? Well, the rubble's being cleared away, and the stage is being set for the construction of the News Ohio building downtown. If you made it to Public Square this morning, you saw the passing of a piece of Cleveland history. But if not, Action 3's Joanne Nader takes us to the end of the Williamson and Cuyahoga buildings one more time. They were the curious. I always see buildings going up. I thought it would be interesting to see uh, this building going down. They were the camera buffs. I'm, I'm waiting for the sun to come up a little higher, get a uh, better exposure. And there were the kids. Oh, are you getting kind of excited? No, not really. And those with a bird's eye view held implosion parties at Stouffer's. The blast was slightly delayed, so the hard hats had the pre-show, wheeling the fuse wires out and preparing the detonator. But it was the main event that left everyone in awe. An 80-year-old cornerstone of Public Square destroyed in eight seconds. Amazing. But the thing that took everyone's breath away was the monstrous dust cloud afterward. It was a solid two minutes of blindness and coughing for those who couldn't make it inside. And most people didn't dress for it, including reporters. And to look at these police cars, you'd think they'd been through a war. But the dust hadn't even settled before the street crews were mopping up. So the building's down, all the dust was unexpected. But before this all becomes history, we're going to show it to you one more time. This time with gusto. But before the building can fall again, we've got to build it again. Ah, the magic of television. Oh, that was fantastic. The best thing I've ever seen in my life. Really great. Far out. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. Magnificent. <laughs> I'm Joanne Nader, Action 3 News. You know, that dust cloud looked like Mount St. Helens, didn't, didn't it? it? As somebody once wrote, and the walls came tumbling down. And they certainly <laughs> did. That's this edition of Action 3 News. Thank you very much for joining us. For Paul Edmonds, John Hank, and my partner Cheryl Brown, this is Leon Bibbs saying good night, everyone. Enjoy your week. Thank you.